All right, ladies and gentlemen, what a what a night of open mic poetry. And now we are going to go farther and farther into the ethereal realms. Carla Brundage is our feature tonight. I'm very excited to have her here. She's a poet of heart, voice, soul, and perspective, a Bay Area activist and educator with a passion for social justice. She was born in Berkeley in, during the summer of love to a black mother and white father. She is the founder of West Oakland to West Africa Poetry Exchange, a wonderful, wonderful organization, and they sponsor events. Board member of the Before Columbus Foundation, her books include Swallowing Watermelons, Ishmael Reed Publishing Company, and Our Spirits Carry Our Voices, Pacific Raven Press. She had her poem, Alabama Dirt, nominated for a Pushcart Prize. Okay, thank you, everyone. Um, I'm really excited to be here at Sacred Grounds. It's true, I'm actually located in Hawaii at the moment, uh, where I just recently moved. So it's three hours earlier here. I was in cross-country practice, uh, which is why I was a little late. Um so I've been thinking about grace this year of 2024 and forgiveness. Uh, I used to have a temper. I could go from zero to 100 pretty quickly. I've been working on this, but um, takes me back to my mom's 70th birthday, which was about 10 years ago when there was an incident. And yes, the incident included alcohol and two aunties. An auntie in Hawaii is an elder who is a part of your community that helped raise you but is not related by blood. And on this occasion, my first auntie, whose name I have changed to number one auntie, informed me that number two auntie had dented her new car as a result of driving while intoxicating, intoxicated. This all happened in the driveway. Not wanting the police involved and not wanting my mom to know, I intervened in a way that caused me to raise my voice to my elder, something I did not usually do. And um, even though I know, oh, and I furthermore, I took the side of my auntie number two. And even though I know she was both drunk and wrong, only to keep the peace, I sided with her. I'm ashamed to share this, but things escalated to a point where I feared it might become physical. But hearing the raised voices, auntie number two's sons appeared and knowing their mom, they took over the mediation and somehow the party was able to continue without any fights or arrests. I thought about this incident yesterday when I learned that auntie number one died of a heart attack suddenly and without warning. I thought about how much she had helped me in my life. After we succeeded in a peaceful party of over 150 people, it took about a year, but number one auntie and I talked it out. I apologized and she admitted to overreacting. Apologizing was terrifying. Admitting I was wrong was even more terrifying, but we worked it out. I don't really have a poem for her yet, but I do have a poem I wrote about women and sisterhood. And so I thought I would dedicate my reading um, to her. Her name is Sharon, Sharon Yarborough. This one is for the women. I wrote this um, after visiting the slave dungeons of Cape Coast, Ghana. This one is for the women, for the women who decided to jump for the women whose bodies became collateral, for women who chose to use our bodies to survive, for women who had no choice, whose bodies were used, dragged over stone and splintered dry docks, for women who walked long miles, feet cracked and caked with dirt of their homelands, for women who could not walk any longer, for the women who suffered in darkness, for women who chose freedom, for women who aspired to light, for women who chose love, who bit their tongues until they bled, for women who hid seeds in our hair, who gave birth in the middle passage, who lost children, and for the women who kept the children of others who were lost, for women who carried a hoe, 
and women who carried a baby and a hoe, for women who held on to songs burning in their mouth, spitting out language and were beaten, for women whose breasts were violated, shivering and unclean, for women whose minds broke, for women who chose to survive and chose to forget, for those who remained silent, for the salty scars we bear, for women who had never seen the sea and women whose hands turned the water into healing magic, for women who brought culture in the crooks of their ashy elbows, women whose tears became healing solves. This poem is for the women. Thank you. So staying on this theme, um, I actually wrote a poem for Kamala Harris uh, in 2020 in the pandemic. Uh, there was a group called the BIPOC Writing Party. Some of you may have participated in that. Um, and there was a prompt by Faith Adiele where she asked us to imagine a future that we like an idealistic future, our ideal future. And at that time, there was another election um, brewing and Kamala Harris had been named um, as the vice presidential candidate. And I said to myself, what would happen if Kamala Harris became the president and she integrated into her um, presidency the 10 points of the Black Panthers 10 point plan? So this is my poem uh, that I wrote in 2020, imagining a Black woman in the White House dedicated to Huey Newton, Bobby Seals, the co-authors of the 10-point plan. One, the brutal killing of Black people must stop. Children, two, are not meant to be hungry. Give us lunch and freedom. Three, schools that teach self-determination and community Four, employment is a right, not jails. Close them and stop police. Five, wars of aggression that support unjust laws in this land. Six, we need bread, education, just peace, control of this new. Seven, technology should make healthcare completely free to we. Eight, demand prison reform to so-called crimes and unjust laws. Nine, to carry arms to protect ourselves and power to determine. Ten, our destiny is not robbery by capitalists, but unity. Thank you. So I'm a high school teacher and um, connected to this theme of freedom schools <laughs> and for school reform. I wanted to share two poems about my students in the classroom. And I hope that this speaks to any um, teachers in the house. Um, this one is called Ghosts. My classroom is an intimate place, apathy filled backpacks, Faces hidden under black hoods, masked sorrow. A hand may raise a question, posed, a comment dropped. Little L bursts through the door, his bravado bearing back breaking anger. Life and limber, he cannot allow his body to rest in a chair. Up down. Each minute he paces the classroom, offering a laugh, a curse, a shocking moment of brilliance. Of course he can quote Sojourner Truth, but why should he when his identity is illusory? He knows Black men, including his father, tossed up like clay birds for target practice the ghosts of bullets bouncing off their backs. Manhood can make dangerous thoughts when what is reaffirmed is his invisibility. Revenge comes naturally. He knows that to be a victim is to not seek revenge. 
For a moment, he sits, writes the few lines of a poem, crumples it up, tosses it across the room, daring someone, anyone, to read it. Our eyes lock. Pick it up. The answer is a slow, deliberate lean, then a taking back. There is a shrug, then a hoodie raised. The tension in the room condenses, the other student suddenly quiet, writing hurriedly of frosted windows. I turn my back, the ultimate sign of trust, and continue to write on the board. He stands and with all his young voice asserts, I need to go to the bathroom. Sure, I say, not turning around. And when I do, he and the crumpled poem are gone. This is another one. Um, it's called English A, um, hearkening to Langston Hughes, English B. Blah, 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 was the word my student wrote today when I asked her how she felt. Blah, 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 blah. And blah, 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 you and all of you in here. She sigh eyed me her meanest mug. It's you I hate the most, she seemed to be saying for caring and asking me to write my feelings, blah, 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 feelings. Very good, I said. I am proud of you for using your words. Usually she just talks about her dark place, a world where she would no longer be and that other blah, blah, blah word. Today, however, she rambles on and on, gnawing her brand new nails, peeling off her perfectly applied eyelashes one by one. The other students giggle not so softly at this exchange. Their patience ran out weeks ago. Someone coughs, <clears throat> shut up. Hey, I say, is that the way to be kind? Well, she's not kind to you, comes the retort. I'm a grown up, I sigh. My job is to help you see your inner beauty. But I'm kind of smiling because I know inside my students are actually beginning to like me. Then comes the arrow, part two, trigger warning. In fifth grade, I began to call like a raven in class. Eyes rolled back, suddenly stiff, stare into space, mouth open, grand mal seizures. My teacher fearfully dragging me one armed to the principal's office, kicking and screaming to consciousness. My mantra, be normal or disappear. Disappearing me by drinking, Swallow me whole to a dark place where I do not exist. This was the seizure, drowning, and yet each time swimming for light, gasping for air, breath, breath, breathe. Part three, reset. Today she is smiling, dances into the classroom, pressing me in an unrelenting hug. I feel like writing a Inspirational poem, she says. The darkness is gone, her darkness, and mine. It's okay, I say. I'm so glad you are here. And I am. I'm so glad we are here. Sisters, we be like sisters. <clears throat> sisters, we love, we fight, silent like tears, wash over stone to make rose quartz. Love, we know each other's soft spots. Sisters, 
we be like sisters under shine and sheen of lashes and sparkles our hearts and breasts our shared secrets beneath sisters like oshun and yemaya two simultaneously eldest and youngest hold fertile wombs of water giving life to seduction when our currents ebb we flow they rise and crest and crash an ocean, a lake, a river, so many ways of holding love, so many ways of forgiving. We be like sisters, like Pele, she fire, and Hiiaka, she cool, like Hiiaka, she demolish, and Pele be the ground to remain standing, creating anew. We sisters, we forgive, we test the waters, we shift the soil, we run like rivers of lava, we pool like lakes of fire, we be sisters, we love. And my final poem is a poem I wrote in response to another prompt by um, Devorah Major former poet laureate of um, San Francisco. She asked this question, she said, um, who, do you, who do you stand for? Who do you speak for? And I remember finding that to be such a, a troubling question. And yet we're poets, to quote Dan Brady, there are only two things. <laughs> And so I, I thought about that a long time, and um, this is what I came up with. It's called She Roars. The line that one crosses to speak the truth, the line that is simultaneously not visible, not true, silenced in shadows, lurking in corners, is an affliction I have of wanting to be heard. I don't speak for anyone. Could I be the person who suddenly dives in the pool to keep you from drowning? A butterfly with one wing fighting until death. My mother, an Alabama river girl. Myself, a Ka'ava rock wall girl. Are there women hanging clothes on the line, hauling water from wells? Black eyed, wandering from accident to accident. That could be me, me then, not now. You must be questioning my veracity. I must speak for myself and the children not born of cotton pillows, but from their mother's backs, women fallen like Eve when it was whispered whore. Hard not to mime the voice of mentors. Hard to speak because my mind warps in doubts of double consciousness, doubly woman, doubly black and not black. If I had a voice, I would tell it to be quiet and then probably not listen. When I was a young mother, I had grand mal seizures. I thought I must be Dostoevsky. Last night I spoke on the phone with a friend roaring with laughter. I don't like to think of speaking for anyone. I like to think of speaking out, out of turn, out of necessity, out of darkness. Thank you. Wow. You have two minutes left. I know you're finished, but you do have two, two minutes left, Carla. I was gonna oh, say. Thank you so much. No, that's what I prepared for tonight. That's thank you. Finish. Good finish. Wow. Okay. Unmute people. Please advise her of her qualities. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we're just speak up. We're just work. Oh, thank hey, you. Wonderful. wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here and for having me. Oh, perfect. So well done. Beautiful. I love your work, Carla, you know that, except that right now I'm extremely jealous that you are sitting in the beauty of, of, of Hawaii and I'm sitting here in, what can I say? 
<laughs> okay, in my last 30 seconds, I will say, I hope you all come to visit me and I'm doing my best to try and make that happen. <laughs> wow.